Being able to take accountability and responsibility through genuine feelings of contrition and through genuine repentance, which is a, not just a religious so-called word or theistic word or biblical word or Christian word. It's, 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 it's a word in the English dictionary that stands on its own outside of anything biblical or anything Christian or anything religious or anything. It's, it's, it's in the secular domain as powerfully as it is in any other. Okay. Uh, era of secularity and um, you know the people that do this sort of stuff and, and what trolls are and I'm educating the parents here as well in terms of trolls and the pathology there is what you're getting here but you can see that there's very little contrition there very little responsibility taking very little balance between you know it's all horrible stuff because I tend to kill you I tend to ruin you I tend to damage you I tend to get all the significance by being powerful and hitting you Okay, it's like toxic and it's terrible. But there's very little balance of, but yes, you know, they did this and they did that, but they did this too and they did this wrong. Let me tell you what, if you can't be balanced about a human being, anybody with half a brain can, or even, actually, no, not even half a brain, so that is, that is way, way too much. One whole brain cell. Nice, no, not even polished. An unused brain cell, we've got billions, right? One unused brain cell can look at something new and assess and establish where a person is. Does that make sense? At the end of the day, I'd like to speak about the importance from this point of view. Seeing we're protecting children, and my answer to what, 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 what are you guys, so what about children, so what's the word they used, what, uh, obsessed? Yeah, sorry. I You're upset, Why are you, what's, what, what's all this obsession about children? And we're not obsessed about children. It's interesting that you would use that frame from, and that phrase and come from that approach with what we're saying here. We are obsessed, if we want to use that word, completely committed to protecting our children, protecting our lives, protecting our businesses, protecting each other. Aren't you? Wouldn't you, upset, wouldn't you be totally, is that what you mean by obsessed? Totally, again, a complete wrong use of words and a manipulative use of words. Unintelligent use of it because so easily unfounded and confounded and you know put to rights it's so easy and um, you know helping people to understand including trolls that are listening here who if you can turn around will I believe that who can't won't to understand that self parenting self leadership self love self wisdom Looking at the truth and the reality of self, looking at the righteousness, not wrongtuousness. There's no such thing as word wrongtuous, I'm just using it. Righteousness, that's what it means. It's the opposite of, if there was a word, I think there ought to be, wrongtuous, from a wrong in to a right in. It's a, we are, science now knows how far, how absolutely imperfect we actually are. We're imperfect, guys. We are so broken. We are destroying this planet. Animals thrive as soon as we have a virus and we all have to go into quarantine, even the healthy ones, mm. or whatever that may be, rightly or wrongly of that. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But I have my sort of opinion on it, but it's not grounded in anything. I'm not going to write about it and hit them. I'm not, you know, give my opinion. I'm not going to do it every day either because I'm not a sucker. But at the end of the day, the bottom of it all. But the bottom line is, understanding the importance of self-parenting starts with being accountable to self, be accountable, body, heart, mind, spirit, be accountable, and being responsible with self, being responsible, being accountable for self. And how we are accountable and responsible for self and our transition to have a good relationship with regeneration. A good relationship, because it's no use me sitting here and we're, and we're hitting people for these comments and whatever, without giving anybody around it actually advice on what needs to be done. At least what and why, not necessarily how, when, where, who, or certainly who, but not what, why, how, uh, and where. But seriously, the bottom line is, we need to be in a situation here where um, we're helping people understand what is behind it, what the problem is behind it, and what it's going to do for their lives. The consequences, natural or otherwise, consequentially, legally, whatever, lawfully, um, civilly, whatever the situation is, societally, you know, in terms of their jobs, their futures, their health, 
looking at the consequences that you can't pick up one end of the stick and not pick up the other. Okay, this is a principle-centered reality. So we need to help people understand that self-parenting, parenting is a lifetime thing, and our parents, if they haven't given us and cannot give us a high level of parenting because they don't have it in themselves from because of their parents, and they haven't taken responsibility for self-parenting themselves, the chances are that if your parents aren't parents self-parenting, the chance of them giving you a high-level upbringing to a point where you're a high-level force, a parent of self, despite your problems, besides your fallibilities, the bottom line is this. At the center of the most powerful, without a shadow of a doubt, the most powerful philosophy, the most powerful religious, um, theoretical um, reality, or, or, or otherwise, or practice, of humanity is Christ and Christianity. There's no way around it. I mean, whether you're Muslim or not, you're still, you know, writing this year, 2022. And, you're, and you have a diary with that on. Whether you're Muslim, whether you're Hindu, these are the dates you're using. It stems back to Christ's birth. Now, I'm coming across from this, not from a religious point of view, or from a, from a spiritual point of view. I'm coming across here, um, secularly for the for, for for now not that i see it secularly only i see it broadly philosophically i see it religiously uh, in its narrow context as in the, the, uh, theocratically or the, the, in terms of theology um or theistically um or or, or emotionally or, or physically or professionally i said through all these you know scientifically and so on i, I said but i'm i'm i'm, I'm, I'm sort of divining it and using it as a word secularly, because it is a secular word in a secular dictionary, repentance, which is penitence. Penitence comes from that, okay? And penance comes from that. And what Christ said was, be regenerate. Seek first the kingdom and its righteousness and all other things will be added to you. What are all these other things? All these other things that people are seeking, like happiness, joy, peace, love, all the fruitages of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, faithfulness, goodness, and self-control, and, and so on and so on and so on. There's none of them. Fruitages of the Spirit. Fruitages, we all want to feel in our hearts and souls. We want our children to feel them and have them and know them. We want to share them as good people with other people in a good way. When we buy a Christmas present, we want people to feel love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness. We don't want them to feel horrible and angst and nervous and hateful. And so at the end of the day, this is as humans, it's the DNA of humanity. So what Christ is saying here, now whether you see, please, I'll bring it in secularly as I say for now. When I say this to you, that Christ in his own right, whether you see him as a prophet or you see him as a, an idea, story, a fiction, a character, story character in the Bible, that's a book of stories. Or whether you see him as a prophet or whether you see him as a saint, or whether you see Christ as a person that lived, that uh, happened to do good things for people and was crucified for, you know, holding the religious establishment, the Sanhedrin, the Jewish Sanhedrin to, 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 to account. And because of that, you know, they uh, illegally and wrongly, like the Danny Mellon doing to us, crucified him. Okay? Or when I say Danny Mellon attempting to crucify us. There's no way around that. And um, the bottom line is, ultimately, that, um, or, or sorry, or, or whether you believe that Christ is a deity, Christ is, or was, in, in the flesh, God incarnate, whether you believe that you, or, or whether you have a personal, like in my case, a relationship with Christ, you know, you may meet Christ tomorrow, you may meet someone you've never met before tomorrow, it doesn't mean they don't exist now and that you know about them. You may not know about Christ or whatever, and you may not know, but all of a sudden, like me, at one point, I did not know Christ existed. It, for me, I, I, it, it was, you know, I, I, was, I wasn't an atheist, but I was agnostic. I wasn't sure. I didn't know. It's only when I started searching for a certain person that I found that individual, that persona, that Christ. And, and, and it, but if you looked at the Bible as, a, for example, a self-help book, because at the very least, it's that. A personal development book. At least... I mean, my goodness, I'm watering it down, please. It's related to something very real and very spiritual and very powerful and very mental and very emotional and very physical and very real. Okay? When you know, when you're connected to it. If you're not, 
Believe me, it'll be, oh, well, you must be, whatever. But anyway, that's another story for another day. The bottom line is at the center of Christianity, which makes it the most powerful religion with Christ, because Christianity is the religion. Believe me, not the churches. The churches are the denominations. The religion is that. And the religion says, become the best you can be. I mean, if, we walk to, if I gave it to you secondly, that's what it means. Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, Christ. In other words, his qualities and his fruitages of the Holy Spirit, etc. and all that. And all other things. What all other things? All these fruits. And you'll be planted, as Psalms 1 puts it, in streams of water and all the, everything you do affluently and abundantly will succeed. This isn't a wealth ministry. This is saying, you know, Christ is saying, I'm giving you the, the stuff. You have the stuff. You need to use it, take it into yourself, build a relationship with him. That's the idea as a Christian, that is. But secularly speaking, the message is, Try your best and seek the highest good against the highest evil. And out of that all, seek um, that righteousness, not the wrongness, and that all these other good feelings of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control, all these things will be all added to you to live a great life, for your child to live a great life, for you to have great relationships with other people. And that's where the problem comes in relationships. Because if you're a person who's in the name of being important, because you have this illusion of you about yourself until you are outed for it, constantly through your life until you realize it, right? But the bottom line is you're in a situation where you look at yourself and, you, and you're realizing that you're unhappy and that you don't have any of these fruitages and, and, and the reason for that is because when you look at it and you, you go to a therapist, they say, well, you're degenerating. You're not regenerating, you're degenerating. You're degenerating into depression. You're degenerating into loss. You're degenerating through one problem and challenge that's bearing you down. You're hateful and you're nasty and you're horrible. And as a result of that, you're becoming broken. You're becoming acidic. You're becoming toxic. You're becoming dark. You're becoming broken. You're getting so much acidity in your bones and your knuckles. You're getting rheumatism and you think it's because of your diet. It's, it's more because of your acidic, nasty, dark psychopathy. Your pathology. It's killing you. Poisoning yourself more than anyone else. There's only so much poison that can go through the keyboard. The rest is in you. And it stays in you. So that's what Christ, whether you see him as a philosopher or you saw him as a good man or whether you saw him as the eternal and infinite solution, as I do, through his kingdom, which is eternal and infinite? Or whether you see the kingdom as some, you know, temporary, finite idea of having the best possible life, which in part it is. The best possible life now, as an imperfect person, which isn't anywhere near what he could promise you eventually, eternally and infinitely in this broken life. You can't have your best life now. The best life, I believe, is way in the future, in eternity and infinity. But you still have an obligation to try and have the best possible life you can now, which includes serving and suffering and taking and sacrificing and doing whatever you've got to do to achieve a result. There's a balance here. It's not one or the other. Don't have a terrible life now. Christ doesn't want you to have a terrible life now. And Christ the message, Christ the philosopher, Christ the prophet, Christ all this stuff doesn't want you to have a bad life now. They want, he wants you to, blessed are, blessed are the meek, blessed are the, blessed are, blessed are, blessed are. And he's painting a picture of certain actions that leaves you blessed. That leaves you with, a, with the fruitages. Right. So the bottom line is where I'm coming from with this. Is what's at the center of this. This is why Christianity is so powerful. And why? His, from his birth date. We haven't been on this earth for 2,022 years. We've been on this earth for a lot longer. So scientists say millions of years. Others say not. Others say it's 6,000 or whatever. But the bottom line is... We haven't been here for 2022 years, yet that's what's in your diary today. That's what's on your phone today. That's what everybody, the day everyone's living. But it's actually not. We've been here for thousands and thousands of recorded history, way beyond 2000. 6,000, 8,000, 10,000, I don't know, whatever, but a lot. And there's different conflicting opinions on this. But it's certainly not 2000. That 2022 stems back to the day Christ was born. So whatever he was or is to you, there's a message here that you can use and you can learn from. And let me tell you what's at the center of it. He said, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. If you want these, if you want to be plant a tree in Psalms, planted in streams of water, and everything you do will succeed. And you get all these fruitages of the Spirit in my sign here. 
Okay. We've got to put it up. We've got to put it up. <laughs> All the footage is of the spirit here. We want those in our life and we want them for our children. Okay. So what does he say if you want that kingdom? And if it's a, if it's a secular kingdom or it's his kingdom or, or your kingdom that you're trying to create in your ego or trying to create a great a kingdom in your home because you want these fridges in your home but you don't believe in Christ as a, as a deity but you believe in him as a, as, as a teacher, as a mentor, as a coach. Jordan Peterson says Jesus Christ is the greatest mentor. And he is because what he did there is he nailed it. I'm going to nail it for you from him. He's nailed it, but Christ nailed it. Okay? But I will, I, will, I will share how he nailed it. And why he's the greatest mentor, coach, counselor, leader. Why he is the greatest philosopher. Why he's the greatest prophet. Why he's the greatest, for me, the greatest eternal and infinite being and through all the intelligence that's there, the power that's there, whatever. And I, that's mine. That's how far I've taken it. Because I started just looking at the book as a self-help book. Without even believing that Christ was even potentially real. I got there eventually. After 10 years or whatever. Or actually, no. It was about five where I really got there. Five or six. But then 10 years to really get it though. Mm -hmm. Right? Took a while. You know, I'm a tough nut. But at the end of the day, despite, you know, that which doesn't help me, believe me, that tough nut thing at times. Having said that, he brought in, he said, you've got to take accountab accountability. You've got to be real about yourself. You've got to be truthful about yourself. You've got to be real about yourself. You've got to be looking inside in, not just out at other people. And living your life and trying to build your significance through running other people down or running people, other people up or running people up and down and getting your significance from and importance from that. He said, you've got to look inside and take responsibility for what is there because that's where your happiness will dwell. Inside oneself. Now me, I know that being connected to the Holy Spirit is going to give me those fruitages and that when I look inside, I, all I see is a lot, of, a lot of the time, a lot of brokenness, a lot of this. But this is how we nailed it. This is what I'm alluding to is in order to be accountable and responsible for our lives, for the truth, for the reality inside ourselves, despite our imperfect ability to glean the truth and to glean reality because of our imperfection and our biases and our prejudices and our addictions and our someone's hurt me now and all this. And that is, it's very important, and that is um, repentance. It defines a real and true person, a Christian, for example, and one that is pseudo, what I call Christ Club. Okay, the true blue Christian connected to Christ will always be a repentant human being, will always be seeking ways to repent, and will always be seeking ways to apologize, always seeking ways to make it right. Because you can't take accountability for something you haven't taken responsibility for. That You can't be responsible and you can't be accountable for something you deny in yourself. If you spend your life and if we spend our lives looking at ourselves, Looking at ourselves and constantly denying what is there. Constantly taking responsibility for what is there. Constantly being in a situation where we tell ourselves porky pies to, you know, we don't, you know, we don't forgive ourselves because we create a story to, over, to cover the problem. And we just get iller and iller because the neuroses, layers of character disordered, sort of layers of like pancakes, sort of go up and up and up. So at the end of the day... Repentance is not to be poo-pooed. Penitence, taking responsibility for and being contrite and taking responsibility for ourselves is where we start to grow. It's where we start to truly develop. It's where we start to truly transition. And through that transitioning, personally and relationally, we start to transform. We start to transition, we start to transform, and then we can take that and take it to the world, take it to our children, take it... You know, take it to our work, take it to the value we're building in people, in relationships, materially, financially. We can then be transactional with it. We can then create something. That's what that means, transactional. Create something with it. Opposed to just the feeling or just the action or just the thought or just the experience of, 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 of what repentance through, and, and through repentance taking, being accountable and being responsible for our error. Constantly looking at ourselves and going... Where is the error? Where is the problem? Where is the challenge? Where is the situation inside us? Because by looking at ourselves, what we find, by looking at our problems and our challenges, we start to find ways of making them right. We start finding ways to make them right without lying about them, without making a story about them, without you know, covering it up with falsehoods, without 
you know, lying to everyone else about it, we actually could take responsibility with the solace, with, 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 with the knowledge, with the peace in our hearts and our souls to know that by looking at what is broken, we can fix it. By looking at what is wrong, we can make it right. By making what is sad, we can make it happy. By looking at what is tragic and depressed, we can turn it into joy. What is hateful and what is resentful, we can make uh, loving, right? You know, and we can start sacrificing our egos. Because that's what, that's what it means. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, right? And what that long-suffering means is that we can suffer the personal indignity of our imperfection. And we can start the process of looking at the reality that it isn't right, that is causing us pain, causing our children pain, causing our other pain. And, and this is another thing. We would, if we don't do this, if we don't, if we don't look at ourselves and become penitent, we don't look at ourselves and become repentant, Therefore, we can't, be, we can't take responsibility. Therefore, we can't transition, transform, uh, uh, and, and transact personally and relationally. We cannot love ourselves. We cannot self-parent because self-parenting means we can't mentor ourselves, coach ourselves, cast ourselves, look at ourselves, and even share that with a mentor or coach or counselor outside of ourselves who may be a higher level four than you or a higher level four period because you're at level one or whatever it may be, or two or three, to help you get into four. They can't help you because you're telling them the story you're telling yourself, and they've got to work it between the lines and realize that you're not this person you think you are, and all of a sudden go, hold on, how can I help you? I can't help you. How do I break this news to you? How do I help this person get out of their delusion? So now it becomes a big problem. We've got to help you get out of the delusion. We've got to get you out of all the lies, and, all, and, and there's just layers of them. And that's what psychologists have. They go and speak to somebody and they start speaking about them and they're telling them who they are and they're taking one, taking one look at this person and going, you're not that person. And then they look deeply through the sessions and there's just thousands of these pancakes connected to other pancakes of neuroses and character disordered frisbees. <laughs> so it's pancakes and frisbees. Frisbees you throw and pancakes just sit there, right? That's a, neuro a neuroses and a, and a character disordered person. And they go, wow, my goodness. How do I ever get to the person underneath it all? And those all, all those pancakes and all those frisbees, neuroses and character disorder. Thanks, Aaron. Um, everything okay there? Cool. So as a result, things looks like we're going to get water today. Anyway, having said that, the bottom line is this. The bottom line is this. Is that if we cannot be repentant, it means that we cannot look inside. If we cannot be penitent, if we cannot be contrite, we're losing our humanness. And then we teach our children like ourselves, to hide what is wrong, to not fix what is wrong, to go out in their life and build an ego, to build a brand instead of a human being, a human brand. This little boy builds up doing this little, or a little girl grows up being this human brand who is unable to look at themselves with any conscience, with any self-awareness, without any independent will, who now imagine themselves something and rather than doing the work, see, be, do, get, give, see, be, do, get, give. They can't be they just become brand. They come see, brand, do, get, give, which is always less in the ability to do and to power, the power to build value as a person. Um, because you're a being, because you've looked in yourself and go, hold on, that's a lie, I've got to change that. Hold on, I was economical with the truth, let me change that. This is a, a conscientious process of eventually being able to forget, and this is the most powerful thing that makes people so well. Science is now proving that people who do this, what I'm telling you now, and pray and talk and share and look inside in and take responsibility for it through repentance. Which is why Christ said, nothing is possible in this world to be right if there's no repentance. You're all making excuses and blaming each other for yourselves. There's no, there's no future in that. The world will destroy itself. And scientists are now saying, it used to be religious people knocking on doors going, the world's ending. Now scientists are locking our doors going, the world's ending. It's like, I think it was, um, who was it that said, uh, you know, that the, all the, these theologians will walk up the mountain. Nietzsche. Nietzsche or Nietzsche. Or, and walk up the mountain of knowledge as scientists or whatever, as students or scholars. And get to the top and see, at the top sitting, a whole lot of theologians that have been here for thousands and thousands of years. In other words, they're going to meet somewhere. And the one will prove the other. If it's honest, if it's genuine, okay. There's a lot of dishonest religion, theology, and there's a lot of dishonest secularity, and there's also there's also a lot of dishonest um, uh, religion. 
a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of dishonest politics, a lot of dishonesty here. And it all stems out of a lack of repentance. Because when you're penitent, what you do is you get still. And you look inside and you take responsibility and it hurts for a while, but you then feel the joy and the love and the peace that comes with that. You don't put build another pancake on top of one another and it all builds up so now you've got to take pills and now you've got to, t- got to start a therapist and, you, and now you've got to run four hours a day or whatever you've got to do to try and cope with this pain of all this stuff and all this pus and all this toxicity that has to come out of us. Does that make sense? And that's why cross said repentance is the key. It's the cornerstone that at the center of love is, uh, in, in an imperfect human being is repentance. Because you can't grow and develop if you are unable to look at yourself and take responsibility for yourself. Can't take accountability for yourself where you get it wrong and where you've hurt others. Therefore, you cannot forgive yourself. I mean, think of that. You're going through your life doing all this stuff. You make a story that deep down you know is untrue. This is how you're living. So you've told yourself porky pies. Right at the front of your brain here, it believes it. But right at the back and right here in your heart and right here in your gut and right here in your solar plexus and right here in your soul and some cell in your toe. It knows you are lying to yourself. Which means you can't, or we, or me, or us, cannot apologize to ourselves because we're too busy telling ourselves lies about this issue. Does that make sense? Mm. And so as a, as a result of that, we find ourselves in a situation where we cannot forgive ourselves. Because we can do now is tell another story to make ourselves feel better and neuroses. Uh, uh, which is always a legitimate, what a, uh, 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 well, what's excuse, it, an excuse for legitimate suffering or, or a substitute, substitute for, for legitimate suffering, as, 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 as psychotherapists say, or clinicians say. But the bottom line is, you can't forgive yourself and you will struggle to forgive anyone else. If you, to the degree you, you struggle to forgive yourself, and you can't forgive yourself because you can't accept responsibility for the truth about yourself, about the reality of yourself. So not only do you make yourself sicker and more stressed and more anxious and more, and more pain and more eventually ill or psycho- psychopathic, you can't be empathic to yourself because you're too busy telling yourself stories that cover up the, the truth, the reality of yourself. So because you aren't repentant, you can't forgive yourself. And because you aren't repentant, you can't forgive yourself. And because you don't forgive yourself, you make stories about yourself and everyone else instead of just forgiving yourself and everyone else. And that's where the freedom is. And that's why Christianity is the most powerful, powerful life cross, the most powerful life coach, the, the best mentor. And this is what I hope to share with you. Okay, what have, I, what have I learned from the Bible that made me a better person, or at least gives me the hope of being a better person? Help becoming more righteous than unrighteous. And the bottom line is this. The bottom line is looking at oneself Feeling the sadness, feeling the breaking of the ego that you created for years, but know that at the end of it, it's like, it's never nice to squeeze pus out of a boil, but you've got this boil inside you and you're squeezing that pus out. And you're making yourself healthy. You're moving away from that cancer. You're moving away from that anxiety. You're moving away from those drugs you'll have to take one day because you've got, you're so full of, of pus and stories and lies. You're so full of bitterness towards everyone else because you cannot forgive yourself. Because you are, you cannot. Because you cannot forgive yourself. Because you know you, there's a rep- repentance, there's a penitence here that you now have to now project that on others. Hopefully, hope, hoping that by doing that, some of the pus will go on them, which it doesn't. It stays here. It just makes it worse. In fact, it builds it. You're now going to that person over there instead of forgiving them through your own repentance. So, how do you repent? Just forgive someone else. In other words, we're talking about relationships here, healthy relationships. When we get it wrong with each other because we're imperfect, the, the, the future of the relationship is only there because we can make it right when we're wrong. That's where the, 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 the nucleus of the relationship is we trust each other that when we get it wrong together or when we accuse each other wrongly, we can come together and make it right. And you can't do that when you're accusing each other and hating one another online or offline. You can't do it, right? Whether behind a pseudonym or not, you're living with yourself in your own past. But when somebody hurts you, and you can't forgive yourself. That means you can't forgive them. And if you can't forgive them, more pus. So therefore, when you, when, when you find yourself in a position that where now you become repentant, and there's people in your life that have hurt you, and you look at them and you go, well, whether they we're able to talk or not, I'm going to forgive them. And you start the process of reasoning. 
And the scriptures are full of those. The scriptures certainly are full of them. And, and you look at that and you, and, and, and you see that in a person. And you go, you know, he's fallible like me or she's fallible like me. I mean, she, you know, she's the same as me. We, we really have major problems as human beings. And as a result of that, I want to forgive this person that is over there. But first I've got to forgive myself. But hold on, no, what do you mean forgive myself, Paul? That person did it. That person was horrible to me. They trolled me. They did this. They did that. They wrote horrible articles about me in the newspaper, thinking they had a right to do that. You know, tearing themselves up for another libel trial that they'll lose. You know, and, 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 and I feel angry towards it. And I feel, you know, borderline at sometimes, resentful even. I don't go online and troll. I work on the repentance. For myself and no one else. But I'm repentant in myself to going, I have committed a wrong and injustice on that person by being hateful. Even though they did what they did, I've been hateful towards them. I've been resentful for them. I've not gone and spoken behind their back. But if I can't forgive them, they'll say sorry and I go, okay, for the purposes of the relationship, he's my child or my business partner or my husband or my wife. Okay, but the resentment stays. It's another frisbee. It's another pancake of neuroses, another frisbee of character disorderliness that's grown there. Another lie you've told yourself. You've done this political handshake which hasn't been a restoration of the relationship, where the relationship has now grown to something powerful and strong and beautiful. It hasn't happened because you can't repent inside, therefore you cannot forgive yourself, therefore, therefore you cannot forgive them, and therefore it is, you go through your life going from people to people, and invariably because you're perfect and they're perfect, that relationship is going to be either be very shallow for a long time, or very deep for a short time, it's going to end. Because there's no penitence between you. There's no contrition between you. There's no empathy or compassion between you. Because the repentance isn't there. That is why I became Christian. That is how I eventually met Christ and understood Him as an eternal and infinite power of intelligence, of intellect, of love, of wisdom, of truth, of reality, and all those things. I've got from this very secular, I've read 1,500 books are getting nowhere with them, pretty much, to this incredible situation I am in now. Um, and, uh, and there's a number of side things um, related to that I'll talk about in terms of things that are happening recently because I kind of committed to Christ. It's amazing. For 18 years we never had any of this and all of a sudden we commit to Christ and all this happens. So you may go, oh, I don't want to commit to Christ but that's going to happen to me. Well, he said as much. He's a great mentor. He says as soon as you challenge tyranny, it will come and it will attack you. And so you're going to have to learn how to handle it and he'll help you and so on. Or his, certainly his word will, his special revelation. That's what the Bible is. It's not just a book of stories. It's his special revelation. It's his book on mentoring, coaching, counseling. And at the core of it, no matter how much you read the book, or no matter whether you are the right denomination or the wrong denomination, or whether you believe in the rapture or not, or whether you believe in the kingdom or not, or whether you believe in God as a prophet, or you believe in God as a mentor, or coach, or counselor, or whether you saw him as just a nice holy man, or whether you saw him as a fraud, or whether you didn't ever believe he existed, or whether you believed he was raised from the dead or not, or whether you believe anything like that, or whether you believe he's the eternal and infinite powerhouse of love, of wisdom, of intellect, of truth, of power, of glory, like I do. Um, when I got here slowly, trust me, slowly. It took me the better part of 50 years of my life to get there. And I went through a lot of different ways to get there. Religions, secular. Boy, I got it wrong. Badly. Badly. It's so humbling. Okay? You have to repent for that too. Just a nonsense on my search. But at the end of the day, the problem, the, 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 at what makes it more powerful than any religion is the fact that repentance for in self, contrition in self, responsibility and accountable, accountability taking in self is so powerful to relate to self for the health of self or the power of self and the relationships with yourself and others. It is at the center of self-parenting. You cannot self-parent or want to self-parent if your modus operandi is going through life telling yourself porcupines, going through life and telling yourself stories that uh, only perpetrate your unhappiness, only per perpetrate your falsehood, only perpetrate your brand and the fraudulent nature or part of your brand. Who can, you can never forgive others. It can only be a political handshake or a social band-aid. But there's this rotten nastiness underneath. And then people wonder why on earth are people dying of cancer or hand over fist, one in three. Okay. 
When you start realizing these statistics you re and you realize the lack of penitence, the lack of repentance, the lack of self-honesty and self-leadership, the lack, the lack of self-parenting that ought to be there as imperfect people. Parents can't bring us up in 18 years. We need a lifetime of self-parenting to make sure that every, the, the next minute is better than the last. The next week, day, year, decade is better than the last. That our children don't develop these same pile up all this acid, all this aggro, all this nastiness, all this anxiety, all this, ag all this hatred in themselves because they can't forgive themselves because they, 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 there's, no, there's no penitence and there's no repentance inside that everything that ever happens to them just piles up and becomes toxic and becomes pus. Mm -hmm. Now, any psychotherapist will tell us this, that this is true. They may not quote Christ like I am, mm -hmm. but I'm giving the benefit to the author, I'm giving benefit to the person who's going, Christ, the persona, Cross the man, cross the God, cross whatever, cross the, well, however you want to look at it, the bottom line is this. It is indispensably and obviously and self-manifestly and self-evidently true. That when you're honest with self, you heal. When you look at something, no matter how painful it is, and you look inside, you start to let them release the pus. It may come in tears, it may come in sweats, it may come in nightmares, you may have to go running, you may have to do lots of things. You may have to take tranquilizer for a while. There's a lot of things you'll have to do, depending on how bad it is. There's some people have to go to rehab because they're on drugs. And to just get off the drugs, just because of the pain and suffering and what's built inside them. Repentance is at the beginning. Let me tell you now, when I look at a relationship with anybody, let me tell you now, a relationship with anybody here at Lighthouse, anybody that comes in here, no one comes into Lighthouse now that is, that is a person who is resistant and hateful and, 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 and blasé or irresponsible with, their, with, the, with themselves. In this level. We don't let them invest in themselves for us anymore. There's no ways. There's people that are here, the Daily Mail and the problems and the challenges that we've had are people that believe you, me, have no inward looking other than what they put there to look at in their little cabinet of their soul. And they put all that little thing in their little glass cabinet and they look at just that. All the other stuff that's around it, the inner swamp, the inner poo, the inner fecal, the inner nonsense. They don't look at that because they only want to look at the little cabinet they got there and the little certificate they got for this and the little, little medal they got for that and the nice thing they did for that child over there because of that and the nice feeling and attention that they have or the rest of the shelves, all the intentions. I judge everyone else by what they do, but I judge myself by my intentions, not by what I do. It's this sort of lack of integrity that we all have at some level. And at the end of the day, this is why Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, whether you see him secularly or not, eternally he's the way, the truth, and the life, or even temporarily he's the way and the truth and the life because his, his special revelation is so powerful that if you learn how to take responsibility for yourself, you heal. When you take responsibility for yourself and you look inside and you take responsibility by using with integrity um, your human endowments, your self-awareness, your conscience, your independent will, your imagination through see, be, do, get, give, through you, you as a body, as a heart, as a mind, as a spirit. This is, this is the makeup, this is the structure of a human, human being. And right at the center of the, 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 the DNA of this sign here, this, these nine footages of God's Holy Spirit, as, as in this book, this, at the very least, a personal development book, the Bible, at the very least, which is for me, foolhardy just to do that, but you'll be amazed. It really is the best personal development book ever written. But the bottom line is this. It works on repentance. Christ came, and the first thing he spoke was, he said, repent because the kingdom is now. Because without repentance, there's no kingdom. Not here, not in your soul, not within you, not in the future. There's no highest human ideal possible by working on your race, by being neurotically and character disorderly delusional about who you are. But taking responsibility, that's where the healing starts. That's where the forgiveness of self starts. That's where the forgiveness of others start. That's where there's love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faith, self-control. All these things start kicking in and you start living a very rich inner life. And then when Christ says the kingdom is within you, you start to understand a little bit of what that means. Because now you're taking responsibility. But while you're going through your life, trying to get, you know, uh, 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 um, um, significance, from the outside, from your lies, from your cheating, from your dressing up, from driving a car, from living in a certain place or wherever you're going or with, hanging around with a certain person or trying to be famous or whatever. You're trying to get significance from that instead of actually inside yourself taking responsibility for your life. Then you will never, ever, ever be healthy. 
you will, to that degree, you will never, ever, ever, ever develop or be part of any kingdom with these fruitages in it. You'll be, as Christ says, a pauper. You'll be a beggar. Okay? What's the use, he said, I mean, what a mentor. He said, what's the use of gaining the whole world through power, position, and greed, but losing your own soul? Not having any of these fruitages. You know how many people on their deathbed realize this? It's astonishing. We've done whole studies on these people on their deathbed. And when they get there, they go, well, what was all that about? Why did I need to be so powerful and so important and so significant through hurting others or through breaking them down or to win an argument at all costs and all of this sort of stuff? This is the powerful situation that exists. Repentance. And it isn't a religious word on its own. It certainly is a religious word in terms of worldview. But repentance applies to everything but to do with self-growth, personal development, self-growth, self-health, and, and whatever. You cannot, Christ, not even Christ, not even God, if, you know, given that God is real, given that God is powerful and God can help you through His Holy Spirit, can help you without that repentance being there. You can't help yourself. Your parents can't help yourself. You can't self-parent without it. You sell out. You sell your life. You sell out without repentance. And I'll be doing a lot more on this. But I wanted to present this there's a reason why Christianity is a past powerful religion. It's the reason why the people are the most healthiest that science is now finding out. There's a reason why people who pray and are repentant and are penitent and are forgiving are more healthy in the long term than people who are bitter and twisted and angry and nasty. In the name of significance, in the name of righteousness, in the name of love, in the name of hate, in the name of I'll get yours or in the name of vengeance. There's no future in that. Science now knows this. And so you go to any scientist in the humanities and go, repentance, in line with reality and in line with truth and in line with wisdom and love and in, in line with righteousness opposed to righteousness and in line with taking responsibility being accountable through that that, that 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 repentance that that is the starting point to a wonderful life with you your children your family the child's upbringing your upbringing and your ongoing upbringing your child goes into life prepared and you, uh, to, to a some degree and goes to their life increasingly becoming more prepared because they can self-parent you cannot self-parent and you cannot self-love and you cannot self-lead even with Christ, if Christ existed, which he does, but if you don't, even if that's your choice and you choose not to, you cannot have a hope and, and, and excuse my, 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 my pun, hell, because life becomes hell without that responsibility taking. So repentance is not a church word. Okay, it works in harmony with accountability and responsibility and healing and forgiveness. And, 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 and only then can the fruitages of humanity, the fruitages of human spirit, the fruitages of God's holy human spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, faith, goodness, uh, whatever, um, long-suffering and, and so on, can come into the frame, can actually be possible for you to start building the kingdom from within, where you can seek it first, the highest human ideal, um, eternally and infinitely, hopefully. But the bottom line is, when you understand this, you are you're empowered and it's exciting. But if you're that invested, that psychopathically invested, that dark, that buried, in hatred, in blaming, you've got that many pancakes and that many frisbees, that it'll take you 50 years just to get rid of them. This is tragic. This is tragic. Mm -hmm. If I were you, I'd just pray. I'd, because, you know, I'd go, my goodness, I can't do anything myself with this. I'm so full of that. And I would just go straight and go. And then you'll be amazed what happens when you do. You'll be amazed what happens. You'll be blown away. I'm telling you now. Because if you think this rock flies around the sun with split-second precision, all on its own, and it's all some random thing, you, then you know, you know nothing about science. You, you, you've got no appreciation for it. And, um, you know, you're lost in this rock that's this flat place, right? That, that is the flat place. It's a round thing that moves around at 1,000 miles an hour, rotates, it goes around the sun at 67,000 miles an hour. It's a powerful thing. If you think that all that happens because there's no great intelligence, because there isn't a supernatural intelligence that made this normal, natural intelligence, this natural and unnatural intelligence, and unnatural results through that. There's an unnatural, natural, supernatural, supernatural, natural, natural. This is how it is. And whether you know it now, whether you don't know it now, for whatever reason, you will find out one day. One day you're going to find out. Everyone will know. 
And I'm asking you to be on the right side of choice. And it starts with looking inside and taking responsibility and accountability through repentance. And I will talk more about that in the future. Chris, do you want to share before we close? No, I'd love, love to. Thank you. Um, yeah, I've not heard um, anyone speak in a way where it is so inclusive. You know, because you're not trying to appeal to everyone. You're not watering down a message. You're not watering down the, the critical importance of repentance. But you're showing the universality of it, the reality of it. It's like the, the, the ozone, the air exists everywhere around the world, but, but the reality of what oxygen is, is universal. Yes. And, and it, so the reality of that is universal. So because someone has taken it and said, well, this now Christianity owns repentance, you know, it's saying, well, the reality of repentance exists. And the consequences of not repenting are devastating. Body, heart, mind, spirit, here. Uh, and well, what do you mean? What do you mean by to say Christianity, uh, uh, to say it owns it? What do you mean? In other words, sorry, I actually went a bit apart. Like re the religion or the people who've, who've said that they've taken something and gone, well, this is our word rather than the reality of repentance. Okay, so the word repentance, the word. Not, not repentance not itself, repentance the practice. Itself. Thank you very there much. There we go. Let's be sorry. clear. Yeah, on that. Sure, thank you for that. But to, just to be able to go, like anything, like love, you know, if you look at Christ, the, 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 if anyone just took the most powerful, the most powerful edict of, for all of life is to, to, to love, love thy enemy. If those were applied by everyone in humanity, we, we would have no problems. But so you're saying that, and, and just to, to take repentance and look at it and go, well, what does this mean for me? If I really looked at where I'm making mistakes, where I have made mistakes, where, where, where I'm so blocked. And I love that you shared about forgiveness because I see that so much still here yeah, right now in me, but it's going, well, I I'm not free until this person does something and then, I'll, and then I can forgive them. But actually, even if I think I've forgiven them, I'm still stuck. Yes. Because I'm not starting with me. Yes. And that is just so profound because yeah. I, I, I've struggled with that my whole life. I, I look at and everyone that I've worked with, everyone that I've interacted with, the starting point is always, I'm feeling bad because you've done this to me, so I now need to damage you or, oh, okay, well, we could, this is a horrible feeling between us, so I forgive you, but I don't really because I, I haven't forgiven myself. I haven't recognized where that actual forgiveness is here in me. Because I haven't repented, I haven't acknowledged my own responsibility of going, this is where I actually got it wrong. This is where I have, I've actually hurt myself. This person's made a mistake, whether they did it on purpose or not. I'm now holding this against them, probably for the rest of their life. Yeah. And how many of those yes, do we have? Yes, yes, how many, yes. Now, this person's hurt me, and it was really painful. Well, yes, it happens. Because what I've been through in my childhood, or whatever, now I'm going to yeah. hold this against you. Now, yeah. now there's this distance between us. Hmm. And that's like the whole of humanity is increasing levels of distance, even within families. It's going, well, my dad, we've experienced that I have, my dad shouted at me when I was this age. I still hold mm -hmm. against him, even though I don't want to. I may yeah, not yeah, want yeah, to, yeah, yeah. I don't know where to yeah, start. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so repenting and going, I'm sorry I've done this, I've held this against him. I forget. So now you can forgive yourself. Yeah. Because you've held yourself accountable for these horrible feelings towards your father. I mean, he shouts at you. Yeah. And I'm going to hold it that against him for the rest of his life, and now you're going to get sick. You're going to get ill. There's no kingdom now. Yeah. It's hell. You're creating hell inside yourself. Yeah, yeah. And you're creating hell for others. Yeah. Because that's what's within, so without. I mean, that's just natural, right? Mm -hmm. It's cause and effect. So within, so without. Cause, effect. It's scientific. Mm -hmm. So, it, 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 you know, it's, it's, it's spiritual. It's, it's mental. It's, it's, it's physical. It's, it's material. Yeah. It's many things, okay? Yeah. But... You know, forgive and forget. Most people, they say, well, I'll forgive, but I won't forget. But actually, the reality is they more forget than they do forgive because they don't even know how to. Mm -hmm. And the reason being is because they don't take responsibility for their hard, nasty, horrible, hateful feelings for years towards that person that's made them so ill. Yeah. And they don't even reason why it's ill. They don't even know why they're ill. Yeah. They're ill because they've held this thing against this person all their life and they're poisoning themselves. But if you go, I'm sorry that I did that, you become penitent. I'm sorry that I've done this. I've actually projected this horrible hatred on this, my father or whatever, for my whole life. Mm. I f I, you can then go, well, I forgive myself. Mm. You can pray if you are that way inclined and you, and you have a relationship with Christ and ask Him for His forgiveness and His blessing and His grace. You can ask for that, which is power, power, power beyond anything I've ever experienced. But I will tell you now for free, 
ultimately that when you you forgive yourself because you've taken responsibility and accountability through 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 repentance you are now free for the first time you're free to heal you're free to love you're free to be true you you you're free to make a difference and you're, you're, you're free to grow and transition, transform. You have a wonderful relationship now with self-parenting and its results. You have a wonderful relationship with the fruitages of, of, of humanness and Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, love, suffering, kindness, and so on. You have these wonderful things that you want to feel, and you now realize you're not going to get them from a... You're not going to get love from money, because that's not where you get it from. You're not going to get peace from products, because that's the where you're going to get it from. You're not going to get joy from going, on, going out on jollies and then going on holidays. Okay, although it may seem that way because it's highly gratifying and exciting. It's not joy. But you understand now where to get joy from. And it starts with forgiving oneself because of being repentant and then being able to forgive everyone and everything else around you. That's the only way you'll get peace. There's no peace in harboring toxicity and anger and hatred and trying to get significance in this way because you know no other way. If you've been brought up not understanding repentance, penitence, contrition, um, accountability taking for self, responsibility taking for self, then you cannot self-parent. And if you cannot self-parent, you cannot parent others. And the reason why you can't self-parent is because your parents couldn't self-parent. Because if your parents could self-parent, the first thing you would have learned was taking responsibility and accountability through penitence and contrition. And through that, it frees you. It heals you. You're not holding on to the past. You're releasing it all the time. I mean, science will tell you this. So when I'm looking at, when I study science and I study the humanities and I study psychotherapy and I study the clinicians and their work and I look at the Bible and I, want, and I look at the special revelation, I look at Christianity, I look at Christ and I look at his teachings, oh my goodness. They just use different words, but my goodness, it's exactly the same. It's exactly what you, you know, if I go to a therapist and say, should I hold on to this or should I forgive myself? The therapist will say, no, forgive yourself. Well, I feel too arrogant and unrepentant to do that in myself. I don't forgive, my, you know, for, they'll, they'll be going, well, no, no, re well then, you know, forgive yourself, be repentant in yourself. They will tell me to do that. They'll use that word because I've used it. Or they don't use it. Does that make sense? I try not to use the word repentant because I think it's a biblical word or a religious word. It, it isn't. It is a function of human health. It is a function of human right chewlessness. It is, you know, whether you have a temporary, finite kingdom in your head and you want to just get on and you want to have these fruitages fin in a finite way or you want it eternally and infinitely through Christ, that's your decision. That's your relationship with, with that. But through enough repentance and by letting all this hate and all this horrible stuff go, it's amazing how much clarity and light there is and how much how you able, enlightenment, right, for one of a word, and, and you're looking at it and going, my goodness, I now see eternity and infinity and, and, and the kingdom, and I now see the Christ, and I see that, and I feel, and I, and I see, and I know this power that exists there. Not because the Bible, I read the Bible as such, or not because I went to a church, or not because I started playing music as a Christian, or started doing anything else, met somebody who was Christian, took me to church one day, and hallelujah, I saw the light. But because you cleaned out of yourself, you cleaned out the swamp that's inside you, you suddenly make way clear to suddenly connect with things and see things eternally and infinitely in terms of the power, the intellect, the love that is there beyond us. You start realizing where you come from, actually. And you start realizing your source beyond earth, beyond humanity, beyond the natural into the supernatural. You start to see that. And you don't start seeing the supernatural as merely aliens. You no longer look for God in the power he made, the universe. Or the cake he made the universe. He's outside the cake. You start seeing this eternal and infinite thing, not this like Lapland idea or this five year idea of, of a God, for example, uh, whatever God it is, okay? Um, and then dismissing it because, because you've decided that that doesn't suit your image or your brand. And, um, but really, really, it's uh, thinking it's intelligent, thinking it's clever, thinking it's cool. When ultimately, all you've done is created a five-year-old idea of this powerful, etern eternal and infinite power. And what you've done is, is effectively reduced it to this five-year-old mental caricature. And then dismissed it as if you're clever, as if you're cool. And well, that just isn't clever and cool. And if you speak to anybody who's been through that, as I have who's realized as a clever and cool and has an absolute reason 
of what, why, you know, if you, you, if you can, I've never ever, I'll tell you this, because of my experience here, because of my hard work here, and because of my deep thinking, and not least Christ, I will tell you this for free. That when I speak to somebody who's a hardened atheist, no matter how much, whether it comes from Oxford as a scientist or a mathematician, that I've never said to somebody that's ever left an atheist, I've always left an agnostic. Not, not a theist or not Christian, but they've left an agnostic. Because just because of the way I've put my, what I, how I see God. And, and that for me, you know, if God exists, for example, without going too much into this, but if God exists, um, or whether he doesn't exist, is, 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 a, is a no-brainer. Well, whatever caused this to become, whatever the cause of the world, whether it's a principle, whether it's a law, and I'll give you a clip, this is the best example of what I mean here. I'm not going to not say it because that won't make sense. I want to give some justification here. Okay, here it comes. That, that, that if I'm here, there's a reason. I have a mother, what's behind that? There's some, her mother, what's behind that? Her father, her mother, her father, her mother. And there's an inter, intergenerational continuum that has to lead back to a first cause. And that first cause has to be a principle, a law, a catalyst. It has to be something that caused space-time so that something, me and you and everything else, in space-time can exist and coexist. And there has to be life and systems for that to happen. So for all this to happen, whether it is a five-year-old idea of God in the clouds upstairs, the little man in, uh, in the clouds, which is not even five, I think it's two, two-year-old. And that's what you believe that is. And that's the reason why you aren't repentant, because you think that in order to be repentant, you have to believe in that. That's crazy. The bottom line is where you come from with this, very simply, is um, knowing that, therefore, if whatever caused this, whether it be a person or a thing or a catalyst or a principle or a law or whatever it may be, that is God. God causes to become. That's all of what God means. When you go, how did all this get here? Is it God? We go, well, did he create it? And the answer is yes, whether it's a thing or whether it's a persona. The answer is yes. There is a God that this came about. Whether you use the word creation or evolution or, 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 or the Big Bang or, or, or whatever. Whatever comes, however this got here, there is a reason for it being here. That science hasn't caught on to yet, really. They, they can talk about the Big Bang, they don't know how, they don't know where, they don't know when. They have an idea, sort of a one and a half billion quid, sort of, uh, sorry, year estimate or guesstimate. It's not clear, okay? It's not clear at all. So at the end of the day, the bottom line is, when you find yourself in a situation when you suddenly realize that God is actually the source, whatever that source, whatever the catalyst, whatever the starting point of all of this, that is God. Whether God is alive now or God is dead or whether God is personal or impersonal, that is the question. Is God alive? Is God dead? Or is God personal or is God impersonal? That, so, so, so whether God exists for me is, is I'm a misnomer. It's, it's not even an argument. It's, it's ridiculous. Because your definition of God is false to start with, you can't argue it. It's inarguable. So, so put that aside. All right? It's whether God is personal or impersonal, real or unreal, not real or unreal, living or, 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 or dead, or living or not living, or, 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 or around or not around, personal or impersonal. It's, it's whether God is one of those things. Is God a thing or a persona? Is God living or is God dead? Or what was once a persona? Or was once... But there had to be a starting point in that, whatever that catalyst is, as I put it, someone made a, a t-shirt out of this for me, with a strawberry with big teeth on it, because I always say, even if it's a strawberry with teeth, that catalyzes this whole thing, that catalyst, well, whatever it is, principle or otherwise, that there, or law, that is God. It's inarguable. God on that definition has to exist. So now we know that what God is, God is, causes this to become, whether you use the word creation or evolution, so therefore God exists. So if God exists on the basis of that fact, and it's, and, and it's self-evidently factual. Then what we have at the end of that is whether he's real, alive, present, or dead, or no longer existing, or whether he's a persona, or, or it is a persona, whether it's he or it, whether it's personal, or whether it's non-personal. And um, an entity, and a principle, a law, a, a, a phenomenon, a, a catalyst, or whatever it may be. But that is what God is. If this, we're going, does this exist? Because of God, or does this exist because it's random? The answer is, nothing is random, everything has a cause, so therefore that cause is God. Not necessarily a person. I believe it is, totally. But there was a time where I wasn't sure, like very, very unsure, to the point of atheism even. 
like borderline, like pressing against it desperately. I almost wanted to be because I was called to be atheistic. But anyway, and my mates were. Okay. But I just wanted to share that with you so you understand that one of the biggest reasons for not being repentant and therefore penitent, therefore contrite, therefore not free from all this toxicity and this ugliness in yourself and unhappiness that it breeds, all in the name of being a powerful, important, and significant, which is just childish. This is terrible twos that's gone too far. And scientists know this. This is all scientific, guys, what I'm telling you now. Every scientist I've ever spoken, I gave my version of God. It goes, yeah, well, it's inarguable. You're quite right. It's spot on. But if you're going to argue a personal God, well, then there's a debate. Ah, yes, we do. But it's not whether there is a God or not. It's a personal God or a non-personal God. And I think that I wanted to make because that links so much to repentance. Because most people won't re repent because that's for weaklings who are Christian. Mm. You've got to be kidding me, man. Mm. That'll make you so, that belief and that action will make you so sick and so limited and so unhappy. And you'll pass that on to your child in the name of parenting. In the name of sharing your brand. Father, like son, you know, all that nonsense. Okay, and all that. I'll leave that with you, Chris. Yeah, just something you said to me and something I've shared with others is saying, if there's one area you don't want to get wrong, it's this. And, 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 and that's repenting for something that you need to, but even just how we see our own worldview, as you're saying, because that's what religion actually means, as you said earlier, but it, it's, it's our perception of that. But just, I, so I found that not to hang on to what I've been taught or what's easier, what's it's certainly inconvenient, or repenting it when you haven't for your whole life predominantly, of course, it's painful <laughs> to start actually looking at it. So, and, and I think to, to be able to even just question the healthiness of just just even questioning and and i know if someone said this this to me 10 years ago you know there's already these blockages oh my goodness it, it, me too the, 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 I know. oh it was like <laughs> ah. <laughs> i thought this was a secular channel <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah 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 no 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 but anybody even even brought up the word crust i would cringe yeah i don't like what i look back and i go what's wrong with me what a child i'd cringe it's yeah. like because of the the association with all my mates and what they what they'd think. <laughs> oh, I, honestly, I was yeah. honestly, I what a child. I leave that yeah. with you. And, 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 and you know, I look back at that, and, and I, you know, I thought that I was hungry. You know, I thought I was the type of person I, I was, I was kind and gentle. But actually, underneath that, there's so much hubris of who I thought I was, and something that I've realised that I think is just so. I'm going to share it, that. What are the reasons that I not even didn't believe in Christ, as an example, but it, from a personal perspective? Not because the information wasn't there or things that I could look into, but because if He is real, even as a person, even as just a physical, not God mm. incarnate, mm -hmm. physical, or even a myth, mm. I now have an objective reference point mm. to assess where I need to repent. Because I've got here, yeah, here's Yes, here, and here. it's scientific. Yes, yes. There's no way that it isn't scientific. It's proven. Here's the ideal. This is the perfect. It's proven, right? Is there a myth? Yes, yes, it's proven. This is, this is the ideal, whether it's a myth, and if everyone held that as their standard, we then have an objective reference point for going, this is what a perfect parent would be. This is what a, what a perfect father would be. This is what a perfect mother. So what I realized in myself is the level of bias and prejudice and selfish, hubristic, self-enlargement and inflation was such, if I actually have to look at, at Christ, I'm going to feel so small. Because actually, I'm, I am so selfish and self-absorbed to actually look at anyone who, who, who going, actually, this is, this is actually how he lived. This is not just in the Bible. This is, it's through, it's through Roman scholars. It's through Greeks. It's through, it's through all sorts of people who are non-Christian, have documented his life and gone, well, this is actually how he was as a human being. Mm. Yes, was he son of God? Yes, or this, as you said, as a persona. Mm. But why is he one of even, I uh, used the example the other day, saying if, if someone had to, or you, you sent us something, Everyone globally had an opportunity to go, well, who would you invite to dinner if you had the opportunity to have one, the best dinner you could ever have, and you mm. could have a, a group of people around mm. you? Mm. And even Christians globally, 2.6 billion of them, um, almost none of them actually said they want Jesus Christ there because, because 
I think subconsciously in all of us, there's a, we actually do feel subconsciously feel so bad mm. about areas we haven't repented mm. on. Mm. And when we have, we look at something that is, that is the light, which is not you or me or anyone else, but there, there's a reference, there's an objective reference point. And if we can't look at that as human beings and go, well, it, and I realize going, why did you not do that? I could say, well, as I was brought up in the Catholic Church and I had certain issues there. I've got mm. a whole story mm. as to why I'm a bit iffy mm. about mm. Christianity and mm. people who are in it because they're a bad representation of it. Blah, blah, blah. But actually, that is a justification of my own denial yeah. of areas that actually yes. I need to work yes. on. Yes. And I've seen that through everyone. Yes. You, everyone's got a story. As to, and, and, and people have been extraordinarily damaged. I mean, I know people have been confused by it. You know, in, in churches and various different things. I can understand, please, there's no, mm-hmm. no mm-hmm. disrespect. And, and one of the things, I, I, someone that I, I work with, mentor, uh, I said to them, I said to them, do you know the majority of atheists are atheists because of they've been really let down, often by their fathers? And this person laughed, and I went, wow. Because he, he, he could see it in himself. He could see that the, mm. what he's gone through and just mm. going... That, so there's there's a, there's an anger with authority. There's this frustration, and then there's and but then what's happening is going. I'm going to hold this against you, this position of authority or God. But actually, as you said, and this is what's really struck me today is this repentance of going. Well, I'm carrying this anger because what was done to me as a child, and now I'm projected onto God, my perception of God, or, or my perception of this position of authority. You get that a lot. You've had it from me. You know, mm-hmm. things I've had with my own dad mm-hmm. are now put on to you. Mm-hmm. I've had it with others. <laughs> yeah, sure. And, and, and because we've been let down, but actually we're killing ourselves because now you've hurt me. And that's why I was saying the central message of repentance. And then at least being humble enough to go, do I really get it? Or am I going to discard this because it's inconvenient? And you and I, we chatted about this a lot. Mm-hmm. The inconvenience... <laughs> Of, mm. of the reality of God, that there is an, 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 an objective reality that we can assess ourselves with. Mm. Yes, it's a personal or not, but their laws, their principles, you're, going, you're getting it. To what degree are you getting it right? Mm. The, yes, there's perfection. Mm. Mm. Humans aren't perfect, yeah. but there's perfection. So yes. therefore, what, how do we assess what we repent for? Yes. You can work it out. It's like yeah. I'm just assessing it. it it's yeah. there because yeah. they're looking at the God standard. Yes. They're looking at the standard of perfection. And, and so I just... I think so often I see, you know, where people are talking or sharing and, and there's, it's almost like there's this objective truth that's presented, but not the human journey into it. Yes. And that's why I pr- appreciate you yes. sharing with such honesty and, and, and just going, well, this is what I've found, but, and I'm sure you will share a lot more about the journey into it because it's a, it's a bumpy, <laughs> rocky yeah, road. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, but, 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 but not as bumpy or rocky. As living a life of revenge and hatred and sickness and toxicity. And you get away with it while you're young. And as you get older, you just yeah. get ill and broken. I've seen the parents of people that have been here. They're just broken and full of acid and full of, and they're, and they're dark. And they're broken and they, they're, they're, you know, but they're still hateful. Yeah. It's unbelievable. It's, tragic, yeah. it's unbelievable. Yeah. You don't see people, child, children coming here that are broken from families. And those, the, and, the, and those parents look strong and powerful and healthy well into their 90s. And there's no way, it's not even into their 50s or 60s. They're broken. They don't have this sort of thing here. Sit forward and talk and be on the camera and be... And be. So that, there's nowhere near. They come anywhere close to this level of leadership, this level of service. None of these parents have that. They're retiring already in 50 years old. They're, they're, head, they're retiring at 40. I mean, they, they're tired. They're hateful. It wears them down. We see it in these parents of the people that come here broken. And so they're looking for parents. And we go, no, no, we're not your parents, but what we will do is we'll self- help you self-parent. And so we build communities where people, and vill- like we're basically villages, what's the word we used? Uh, um, communities. No, 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 no. Um, so, not surrogate. It's not surrogate. Surrogate, surrogate. Sur- surrogate communities, sur- surrogate villages, and, and, and almost like and, and, and surrogate families, um, not replacement families, surrogate families so that people can become parented enough that they can self-parent mm. and then start that journey. Mm. But the bottom line is I've become a better, better, better person through repentance and through contrition and through responsibility taken and by taking responsibility. And, and I've been able to forgive others. I have a better life for that. I'm gentler because of that. There's a lot of things here uh, that, that I'm improving on and my life is better. I have a better life with Christ. I have a li- I, I'm excited about you know, eternity and affinity and the kingdom. And, 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 and now, the kingdom starts now. I'm working on it now. And so, 
you know, uh, when you realize that, it's a powerful, a powerful reality, truth. It's a powerful, the most powerful of all realities. Way more powerful than untruths, the reality of untruths. I'll leave that with you. Thanks for listening. Lots of love. God bless. Have a good day.